All right, so welcome to today's session. It's going to be on interview preparation. And as introduced in the previous session, I'm going to be running this. But at the end, I will have uh, Shamil, Hilary, and Ms. Dill jump in uh, just to answer a few questions and also share their experience as we also prepare for our upcoming interviews. So let's get into it. And okay, I'm sharing my screen. <clears throat> well, it's an interview preparation. Um, so let's get started. Uh, let's assume that you are on this phase because you got an awesome, awesome resume and you avoided any errors and, you know, name the right keywords and your accomplishments and all your application materials are speaking for themselves and that is ex exactly why the company decided to be like you know we need to hear more uh, from this person so let's invite him or her on an interview so we are going to be looking together on how then do we prepare for that interview Next, we will have a session actually that goes uh, with, um, you know, what happens then during the, what happens during the, uh, during the interview, what kind of mindset you have to take in there, how do you answer which and what questions, like specifically like a risk scenario when you are into the interview. But for now, we are going to be focusing on the preparation specifically. Um, and uh, so moving forward, how do you convince the person on the other side of the, your laptop to hire you? Or if it's physical, if that person is on the other side of the table, how do you convince, convince them to hire you? How do you win the interview specifically? Number one is to take care of your first impression. First impression, this is like a sneak peek, you know, uh, I hope I'm not confusing you on why I'm going to like, walk you through the interview. When we get back into the preparation, don't worry. Just want to give like this sneak peek of uh, what to always think about when you're also preparing. So when you're preparing, ensure that uh, you have to know that judgments are made in the very first 30 seconds of an interview. And that we make them predict the outcome of the interview. In the very first 30, seconds the interviewer is going to know if they're going to be proceeding with you or not i mean you know it's in other words people call it um a pursuit of conf confirmation of like, a pursuit of confirmation bias because in those 30 seconds they are very few to judge a person completely but they can tell if you're actually the kind of person you you are according to how you are showing up specifically in those 30 seconds the rest is just to confirm like is it what i'm thinking true or not if they saw you as a big confident person they want to actually be sure that you're also confident in the work that you're going to be doing that you understand your work that you understand the team dynamics they will understand the company and everything but when, when also you show up shy and um you know uh, not inviting or very nervous uh, they are like, maybe, you know, let, let me try to confirm. They, they immediately get a negative feeling, but they proceed the interview just to confirm, you know, to confirm that maybe this is the personality she or he has. So let, let me just hear if actually he can or she can do the work because not everyone has a vibrant and welcoming personality, you know. But most of the time, you have to take care of the 30 seconds, 34 seconds within your interview. And uh, it's also say that 99.4% of the time is spent trying to confirm whatever impression the interviewer formed in the very first 30 seconds. And that's what we actually talked about. If you need reference, check out the careers manual. Everything is in there. All these points are just covered in the careers manual. So how do we prepare ourselves uh, to win this very first 30 seconds? Number one is to show positivity. You know, smile if you if you can, really smile, be welcoming, be friendly. And then number two, have a quick icebreaker question. People call it a weather question because that's the 
uh, the most common and really fun question that anyone can relate to. You know, asking like, oh, how is the weather out there? You, maybe when they say, oh, let's say uh, I'm Arun, I'm based in Germany now. You know, just to break the ice, you can ask, okay, how is the weather today? They will be able and open to share. If they are happy that summer is out, they will tell you smiling too. And that will relieve your nervousness. And uh, if maybe it's winter and it's cold, they're trying to hide in their blankets and stuff, you know, you, you give up your ideas, like maybe light up something or take some, some hot drink, just something to break the ice, get yourself used, uh, you know, welcomed into that interview and to feel free with talking to that person. And number three, show confidence. Show confidence. I really, no matter your personality, we understand that people have different personalities. But when you show confidence in the things you are talking about in that very small conversation you are having with the suggested suggestion ideas about the hot tea or hot coffee you are giving, with how you're also presenting the weather in your country, because they, they are likely to ask back. Like, how is it in your country? You know, and you show confidence that you actually understand uh, what's going on. I'm saying this because majority of us, the uh, African continent, simply because we do not have summer, winter, uh, those kind of things, we get confused about well, what weather are we on. So also when you ask this question, ensure that you can also reply quickly back. It, say it's not summer, but it's a dry season maybe. But be confident in the answer you are giving. And if they ask any other prompts, such a question, you are also able to answer confidently. Like you want to look like you are already, like you already know that person, even if you don't. But yes, show confidence. And then show stability, be natural. Um, uh, don't be a seller. You know, how can I say this? But we are going to see better of this point when we are going uh, into the, the rest of the slides. But by showing stability and being natural is to try to avoid the nervousness. Everyone gets nervous of the interviews, but I'm telling you, you know, you do not want to create an environment where they are trying to pity you, uh, to feel you're sorry for you, uh, that you know, you are in this situation. No one likes to be in an interview situation. I'm telling you, no one. Uh, but we have to fight the nervousness and you have to show stability and to look natural just to be human. And then uh, there are things then when, when we are thinking about going into the preparation. Before we go into the prior checklist, there are things that we, do, we did not include here but that are very, very necessary and that actually everyone should be knowing. But just as a reminder, ensure that you have your video on if it's a remote role. You have your video on, it's functioning well, like your data are not slowing down at any time. So ensure that you have your video and it's stable, ensure that you have good lighting in front of you and ensure that uh, uh, you are kind of you can predict that the electricity won't go out so your, your wi-fi won't go off also if you if you have a stable uh unstable electricity you can plan to use your wi-fi yes but also use your phone network if you can have your phone network uh, then to, to cover you for the rest like you have your phone data to cover you for the rest of the interview then use that instead of going for the Wi-Fi that may be affected by electricity. So some of the basic things really, but just as a reminder that they are very important and um, yeah, yeah. Just so for a um, better outlook. And then um, let's go then to the normal interview then checklist. Number one, spend time doing research. One, focus our maximum or minimum. Do your research like we are practicing during the company study. Really do your research. And we have that, we have already seen the key components of your research. 
all about uh, what you know about the background, maybe uh, what you know about what's trending. We are going to see more about this. And then build your own interview questions, build your own interview questions, then practice your responses out loud. This can be by going to YouTube or going to Google or other platforms and look for uh, common interview questions and then try to practice them out loud. And then also be sure that you have prepared a list of questions for the interviewer. And then those kind of questions should be should be able to show that you are a thinker or you are a curious person. They do not have to be common, um, common interview questions. We are going to also get on this slide, so we will talk more about that. And also be sure about your targeted salary range. Very important. Uh, yeah. Then uh, and then uh, when it's time, attend all physical and mental requirements. That means you are in a good, uh, good, quiet place especially if you have kids at home, maybe you are sure that you went to a nearby workplace to avoid the kids running out of the, in the house, or ensure that maybe you tell the neighbor to look up that. I don't know. Just ensure that everything physical is good and those mental requirements ensure that you are also uh, in, a, in a good mood, you are hydrated, because of course you're going to need to, you, you will be speaking for long, or maybe have a cup or a glass of water or a bottle of water near you. Uh, be sure that you are doing well, or uh, like you you do not have anything stressing you, uh, that you are actually feeling ready for the interview. And then put on business attire, no matter if it's remote or or if it's uh, or if it's physical, put on something presentable. Business attire doesn't mean a suit. You have to wear what we what we call uh, tech professional or tech casual. That means anything that is good looking, very well put, but also that doesn't look very casual. You know, I, I hope we are all modern, we are living in this world, so we already know maybe what we're talking about. Like that outfit you like to take out on a hangout with people who are professionals, maybe your potential mentors or already mentors on a networking event. You do not want to look like you are too much of a business person, but also you do not want to look like you did not you did not take that event seriously. So, you know, in between, tech casual, tech professional. Many people call it tech casual. So yeah. Then get ready. Then let's get into the the questions, the the questions that give us the next interview or that make the hiring manager be like, you know, we are moving on with another candidate. Uh, so these are majority of the questions. Number one is, what do you know about our company? Number two, tell me about yourself. Number three, take me through a project that you are proud of. Number four, it can be behavior questions. They are not likely to ask many of these, but, you know, be prepared just in case they ask. And then number five, situational questions and technical scenario questions. This is where we will have our fellow trainees jumping in. And then on salary expectations, um, you know, how do you answer this kind of question specifically? So let's look into number one. What do you know about our company? Quick answer, talk about the mission. You found it in the background. You talk about the how, how they are trying to achieve this mission. You through the product and service they are trying to provide, give you give an understanding of the product or service they are providing, and then one recent trend, and also something maybe you like about them, the company or the team or you know anything, anything that will make them blush. Yeah, or it, it, it can be casual, it can be anything, but. Yeah, just tell them about something you saw and you liked about the company or you liked about their products. You know, just anything you liked in general could make that interesting key point there. And then, you know, we have already talked so much about the company studies, so let's not spend so much time here. How you formulate it, we are going to be practicing it in the challenge um, for today. So let's proceed and then we will see. And then only tell me about yourself. 
uh, this is where you talk about <coughs> your intro. Your intro and your why. I can see. I can see your best asked a question. Yes, we are going to get there. Uh, no worries. And then, actually, when you are asked about to tell me about yourself, it's time to sell yourself. You know, we do not like to call it selling yourself because it sounds a bit negative or desperate. But it's true. It's time to show your value and time to tell them why they should actually hire you. And then number one, of course, you are going to state your full name and say that you are based in Ethiopia and say that you are maybe a machine learning engineer or DE or what did I say, W3. Gen AI. And you do not want to say that you are a student, to be honest, unless this is an internship role. Um, but yeah, you do not want to say that you are a student at all, even though you're still in school, but keep that aside. And then, uh, because there is a way everyone perceives a student, we already know that. We already know that. So yeah, let's ignore the saying that we are students, we're still learning, we're still in school, unless it's PhD maybe or oh, unless it's masters, you know, because that way they think that you have enough time. Of course, you have experience for being there. And they also think that you have enough time on your on your plate to do the work. But if you are a bachelor student, they will be like, you know, the student will not get enough time to commit full time to this job. Or they will start to see you as a junior. There are just common, uh, unfortunate misconceptions. And number three, Going next, this is where then you come and talk about your value. That means what you are currently doing plus what you did prior to your current experience. That means if you're currently working, you are going to be taking saying maybe, oh, I'm an AI engineer at Ten Academy and I'm building this and that. And prior to joining Ten Academy, I was maybe, uh, let's say, a software developer at where at open ai and i was doing this and that and then you continue to tell them why you decided to apply so you know this is when you start talking about i noticed that you opened up you even don't start by i noticed tell them how you noticed it like uh, i've been following your company on linkedin for a while even though you didn't but you know you've been following the company for a while and you notice that they opened a new role for uh ai engineer and you were so much interested because you are connected with this and that you know you are so much interested in building what they are building you know talking about how you connect with their mission and then closing show your appreciation like i actually appreciate that you took uh time to meeting to meet with me today so that we can talk about my experience further and how it can be the best fit for this role and you are done majority of the time it's better to use two minutes but if you can't fit it into three minutes then you do three minutes so let's come here to the people then who do not have any work experience or any um yeah any work experience in general it's better, you say, um, on what you are currently doing, you focus on your projects. So currently I'm working on a project that is, you know, on this and that. You do not have to go into details of the, the project, just an overview of the project. And then prior to this project, I was also doing this kind of project and project, and I was doing them uh, in a 10 academy training that is focusing on this and that. And then prior to joining 10 academy training, maybe I did ALX to those who did ALX before ALX Africa. And I did software engineering, a 12 month course. I completed it with distinction. And you know, I decided to apply maybe because I'm looking for further work experience where I can be, um, yes, of course, you can also highlight how you notice them and then continue to say uh, how this is going to be part of your, how you want this to be part of your experience moving forward. Like you feel like you can be an asset 
to their company because within the role they opened, they are looking for someone who has software engineering background and also generative AI background, and you have them both. And then continue by closing. So you can see that we both fit in. If you have experience or if you don't have experience, you both fit in here. Then by continuing, ensure that you tailor this, uh, your answer to be very specific to the role that you are applying for. What do I mean here? Let's say uh, you just jumped into Tan Academy, but you do not have any other prior technical experience. You have never been to ALX, you have never done a job where you were even a web developer, you have never done any of that. That means you are going to say here that maybe before you were a marketing manager, and then you realize that you have passion in learning more about data engineering and how much it connects to marketing. And you know, you grew that grew your passion into uh, data engineering. And then you dared yourself to jump into the training just to harness your skills in data engineering. And now you feel so much confidence to even take up the world, real world problems and help team solve uh, problems using data engineering skills, you know? So you try to connect the two. You do not ignore the fact that you have been a marketing manager because, because you are applying on a technical job. No, you just say it, but try to connect on then how you jumped into being um, a data engineer now and being so open to data engineering now than focusing on marketing management roles anymore. And that we that might bring up different other conversations like, oh, so tell me more about it. Actually, what triggered you? Maybe what, what triggered you then to move from marketing to data engineering? Is it maybe you were working with teams that were doing data engineering and you felt like you know you you like it and you see the impacts they are bringing and you see um you know the big things they are doing and you felt like you can actually also love being part of them i don't know how you think to tailor your answer but have background stories of how you jumped into the technical aspects um of this world you know how you jumped into the tech world have your stories aligned and you do, when you're asked that question, you do not want to spend time thinking, like, um, actually, what happened? Trying to get your answer, no, because this is your story, they expect you to have your story, you know, like how someone can ask you, like, how did you actually end up in UK? How did you end up in UK when you're Kenyan? Maybe. You are able to tell them, oh, maybe I married someone and I had to move. That's your story. So even for this one, have a story. Uh, you, it's your own story. It's your story, big time. So be ready to just speak it out when you are asked, and in very short words, actually. So let's continue. Allow me one minute to change places now. And I forgot to book a meeting place, so someone has booked it. So they had to test me out. <laughs> but no worries, let's get back to let's get back at it. Um okay, number three, we are on take me through a project then that you are proud of. This is where you go through uh, the project name, what was the objective of the project, uh, the metrics you use. That means, um, you know, uh, are there any technical metrics you had to use? Because maybe there are so many different metrics you can use. And that comes to also the process to the end. That means your approach from the very beginning to the end. And then the challenges that you faced there are no projects that do not have any challenge. So it's okay to be open about, you know, when I got in the middle, I met this challenge and I overcame it like this and that. 
It also shows your problem solving skills up to. And then later, talk about the end results. What were the end results? Did you come, uh, um, come to have all your projects ready with everything you were doing? So yeah, you share that out loud. Then optional, you can ask all volunteer to present your screen. That actually can earn you some marks, especially when you see that you have an interview that is scheduled maybe for one hour. Uh, that means they want, because majority of the interviews are scheduled for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So when you see that they made it one hour, try to make yourself comfortable and sell yourself out 100%. So you can ask them to share your screen and show them everything about that project. Then uh, uh, after that, ensure that you share the link at the at the end of the presentation maybe um i don't know github repo where you deposited uh, the output of your project really just share any link to where they can find more information or where, or where they can go back and read more about that project and your approach to it so this is very optional but ensure that you ask about it even at least that um at the start, when you're starting to answer, before you tell them about the process you went through, you can say like, actually, as I show you the process I went through, can I share my screen? They will be happy to hear, uh, majority, I guess. So they will be like, you know, go ahead, show us. And then you will go ahead and show them. And then next, uh, describe your experience with working in teams. This is when uh, here we are done with the projects, you know, you know, with the basic things, they have already understood who you are, why you want to join the team, and they already understood one of the best projects you are proud of, and they now they are like then coming into behavior questions or uh, company-related questions, and majority of them comes with team questions. So number one, when you are asked about your experience with working in teams, especially for tech roles, you know that you have to work with different teams, many different teams to get your job done. Uh, let's say you are, how do we call it? Maybe you are a data engineer for a marketing team specifically, then most of the time you have to be working with the marketing team. You have to be working with the sales team to understand what actually people are interested in out there so that you know you can tailor your data or I don't, I don't know, just anything. I, I know that majority of the technical roles you are going to be working with different teams, but actually also in many companies, um, uh, working in a team is an essential part of everything. Uh, yeah, we already know that. So when you're asking, when you're answering that question, you have to provide specific examples. And uh, specific examples, of course, when they ask about your experience with working in teams, it's better to answer with an example so that they can understand, they can have a bigger picture of what was the situation and how you actually contributed. And that's what I was talking about here, explaining, you go ahead by explaining the team's objective, your role within the team, and how you contributed to, the, uh, to achieving those goals. Team's objectives, like what brought you guys together? Was it a certain project? Was it a certain issue? Was it a certain customer complaint that the customer team brought to you and you are included in figuring out how you can contribute to, um, to find a solution, I mean, anything. And then moving forward, you share how you navigate different perspectives and personalities within the groups. Majority of the remote teams, they are more interested in this, more interested in this, because the, you, there are people with different nationalities, there are people with different uh, uh, sexualities. You know, there are so many pronouns out here now, uh, people who identify as what and what, so they want to understand how do you actually navigate being in different perspectives and personalities within a group and then quantify your successes with numbers or metrics wherever possible and uh, so number two <laughs> i'm seeing a reaction from betty actually you know that's the thing i think you heard it from grace's uh, um, what was that chinese led conversation where they told us she had to meet people who identify as dogs at work like that's super weird they're super weird so but but just talking about how you 
treat people equally and things. You do not say that out loud, but you know, you find it yourself to how to explain this. But let's see an example here. So I gave an example uh, that is not related with tech. Um, that is not related with tech. It's basically related with what I do because it's what I, I understand so much more. But moving forward, we will have an experience, shared experience from our fellows, like we said. So let's, through, let's go through an example, kind of very summarized example I can give out if I'm asked this question. I can say throughout my career, I've worked in various teams ranging from small project groups to large cross-functional teams. So here I'm giving them a background that I've done this throughout my career. Like this is not something new. I've been a team worker throughout my career. And I've worked in small teams and I've worked in large cross-functional teams. Small teams, that means maybe it's just your department, your gen AI, your AI department, and maybe uh, a department from what? From sales. And it's just the two of you. Or large cross-functional teams where so many people are involved. Maybe the legal team is involved, marketing is involved, sales is involved. So like it's a big project. And then continue by saying that in my project, I had to work with a team from different departments, sales, product, Q, uh, quality assurance. And then our goal was to come up with a solution to a customer issue. Why did I highlight this in red? It's because you do not just say to a customer issue that that's very vague. You just have to give a perspective of what was the issue specifically what was what was going on what was the customer uh inquiring and why was that actually an issue maybe were they not getting the results they needed because they needed another feature in your app i don't know just anything you have to explain here what was the issue and then uh, I had just to write customer issue, simply that, because, you know, this is a tutorial, but if it was an interview, I would explain better as well. Then uh, moving forward, that means I took them through, I've done this, then I take them through a situation. With the situation, I have to explain better. And then here, I'm going to be talking about the action we took and the results that we got. So with the action, we held regular meetings to discuss and track progress, and every team member's input was taken into account when making decisions. Why do I come back to this? Every team member, uh, sorry, so every team member input was taken into account when making decision. Why do we say this? It shows inclusion, you know? you you are showing that you value everyone's idea when you are having a discussion in a team setup and then as a result uh, we were able to deliver successful outcome for the customer and of course you do not say successful outcome only you just say as a result that maybe the bug was fixed or maybe we saw that it was necessary to have the feature or maybe this and that maybe this and that and we ended up doing it so just explaining the results in details and then the customer ended up by saying that the customer was happy because this is the main, main, uh, main, main focus. You are solving this problem so that you do not have to lose a customer. So you ended up having a happy customer and I could see firsthand the benefits of working collaboratively as a team. And after this, I also highlighted that, you know, I can see that actually do, uh, working in a team helps solve different things or different problems. So moving forward, there are more teamwork questions you may be asked beyond that, or even you may not be asked this one, but maybe ask, get asked this kind of question. Maybe they ask you, how do you feel about working in a team? Number two, maybe they ask you, what actually do you think makes a good team? Kind of a tricky question, but you have to think through. We have done challenges about teamwork and different behaviors that everyone in a team should be having so remembering that and then tell us about a time you showed your your strong teamwork skills maybe you solved a certain conflict maybe people had different two different opinions that were not coming up to a conclusion and you acted like a third party and helped them come up to a solid you know uh, solid uh, conclusion i don't know just anything then tell us about a time uh, about a time a team project failed. 
very critical. You, I, I don't know if uh, even if you can't find a work experience where a team project failed, uh, you can even find an example from college or anywhere by saying that you have never been part of a project that ever failed. I don't know. A project cannot fail at all, like completely, but maybe some phases of it in the beginning can fail. You know, just have something to say, but you know, being asked a question that will make you sound negative and you try to avoid it, they tend to doubt you. Like, no one is a perfect, uh, no, no one is as perfect as like that. So try to have an example. It shows that you are human and you have been part of human experiences. And then, have you ever worked with managers or teammates you didn't get along with? And how did you manage this? We had so many of these questions in the different challenges. So I bet it's easy to get. Then how would you keep your team motivated? This is when you are a team leader or you are an exemplary teammate, anything. So even other questions. So go in prepared to be to have like solid answers when you are asked about this kind of um, behavior questions. So let's talk about situational and then technical questions. When you're asked about uh, situational questions, uh, as Shamil, Ms. Till, and Hilary, you're here, I hope you will you will give us one example of any situational question they asked you. You know, situational questions most of the time comes in, tell us about the time this and that happened. Tell us about time this and that happened, etc. You know, um, situation, just a situation, a situation that once happened. So when you're answering that question, there is the international recognized technique that you are able to phrase your story because a situation always has so many stories to it. So for you to keep your answer aligned, they suggest that you use this star technique. Number one is the situation. You give the context of the situation you experienced, including relevant details. You know, what happened? You know, give us the tea. What was the situation? And number two, on your task, what was your responsibilities or your role in the situation? For me to explain this better, let me get my reference here. God, I deleted this. Let's see, let's see. Okay, I don't have it, but I will give you uh, the reference so that you can read more about it. It's very beautiful context and tells you what, how to actually approach a star technique when you're asked a situational question. And why did I combine, by the way, situational and technical questions? It's because most of the time situational questions comes back to a situation you may face in your role and not a leadership situation, just a situation that may, you have to face as AI engineer or data engineer or you know machine learning engineer. So, you know, that's why I combined them both. And then uh, on your task, we were done with these and then action. This is where you take them in-depth details about what you did and why. And when you are using this technique, you want to spend almost like very few minutes here very few minutes here or even one minute explaining about the situation and what was your role into this situation and then you spend so much time here on the action everyone is interested about learning about what you did in that situation how did you approach it what techniques what processes did you follow anything and then you go ahead talk about the results share about the outcome you achieved through your action that you took so we are supposed We are supposed to be having an open discussion <clears throat> with Hillary, Missy, and Abubakel. But you know, before that, let's go ahead and talk about salary negotiation. We will come back to this. Allow me. But let's go back to the salary negotiation first. So at the end of the interview, you are going to be asked about uh, the salary that you expect. And the very first thing is to ask about the budgets they have. And you ask politely. You'd be like, um, uh, why am I saying politely? Politely sounding negative. I mean, you ask curiously. You know, you say, I've done my research 
on what is the company, uh, oh, sorry, what is the market, uh, how do you call them, compensation bond? Let me write it here. you know, about the market compensation bonds for this role, um, you know, so I have a couple of ideas, but also I would like to understand what is the initial budget for this role? You know, what are you, what were you planning to offer for this role? It's always better. And majority of the companies, because they are supposed to be transparent, especially from the US companies and Europe companies, they are going to be telling you because they are actually by law they are supposed to put out the salary out there but majority of them do not do that because they you know they can they they can let that role open in us and they have to offer maybe a hundred twenty thousand um what is that okay maybe the, the role is 120,000 but for them they are intending to get someone from Ethiopia who will not cost them much so they they be like there is no need to put the salary out there so we will let people um, we will let people negotiate so when you get in this interview they may be forced to tell you and majority we gladly tell you like we are uh, we are budgeting maybe I don't know 40,000 per year for this role. And that's when you go ahead and do, so you tell them uh, like maybe that's what I was looking for as well. Or if it's not what you were looking for, then you tell them where you stand. And I tell you, I have a friend who has a personal experience with this one. He, she is doing customer success as well. And she went in an interview. Uh, she were, it was the first time working for a US company, and she negotiated having a maximum 30,000 per year US dollars. And with her offer, they offered her 50,000 actually, because they have to be honest about what they are offering. But imagine if it was just a terrible company, they would, should, they would have given her what she negotiated 30,000 only when she was supposed to get 50. So yeah, now she's on a 50,000 salary when she actually negotiated 30. So when you do not have much information, feel free just to answer. Now what is, if they reject your answer, they'd be like, okay, bye, you can tell us what you are looking for to for it. Then you can go ahead and tell them, but always ensure that you ask first. And uh, look confident when you are asking, by the way, because you also do not want to look like you do not have information about what you want. Yeah, look confident when you are asking and be confident in your question. And then number two, uh, as of July 2024, just from the information from Glassdoor, by the way, use Glassdoor, uh, look up what companies, especially to known companies, look up what they are offering. But generally, to DE and Gen AI and DE roles in the Middle East and Africa, they are offering a range from $1,500 to $2,000 per month. This is per month. And then for local, if you are getting a role within your own country, let's say it's Rwanda, Kenya, Ethiopia, I you know, Nigeria, where you are, you have to remember that our countries have kind of compensation limits that makes companies have certain amount to offer for different roles. So for majority of the roles locally, you will find that they offer a thousand to a thousand three hundred. But also if you have someone, uh, if it's a local company and you have someone that you can openly ask, you know, feel free to ask them. And then last, uh, we have something we call, this is net, this is net. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, okay, May, by the way, there are places where they will get to ask you if you are going to be, especially for remote roles. That we are, that we tell you maybe we are offering let's say fifty thousand per year and that is gross and you will be uh, you will be asked to cover your own taxes and your own uh, pension plans and you know all other benefits 
from your salary, feel free to say yes. Or, or if they ask you if you have the ability to do so, say yes. Uh, if you don't have that information on how you can cover that for you by yourself, feel free to call your revenue authority in your country, ask them how does that work. Then you can do it or you can't do it. It's just your choice, but have, have some kind of information on, how, on how, that, how that works. If you want to pay your own pension on taxes, I feel like it's just an easy process, normal process. But for you to have an idea, ask someone about how it works when a company does not pay for you and you're supposed to pay for yourself. So, um, because even when you accept that, you know, that's when you receive an offer. When you accept that, they ask you for some papers, maybe that will prove that you are going to be paying for your pension and stuff. So it's better just to have information as someone when you get time. So let's go ahead and prepare, uh, go ahead and talk about the questions you have to ask the company. So this is your, your opportunity to showcase the type of thinker you are, and that's meaningful questions you'll be likely to ask if you started your day one. This is very key. This is very key. Ask meaningful questions that you'll be likely to ask if you started your work on day one. What do you mean by this? Ask a question that shows that you can be ready to go to the job right away, or kind of question that you may ask on your very first day as well. Hello? Okay, sorry. Then let's have an example. I have just two questions that most of the time I ask. There are so many other questions you can ask related with your role. Maybe they explain something around in your discussion and you do not get it well and you want clarifications there are so many ways you can approach this question but ensure that they show that you're not asking for the sake of asking you're asking for you to know so for the first one it's let's pretend it's 12 months from now you've hired me we've done trainings and you are looking back what do you need to accomplish in order to come back to your team and say you know i'm glad we made this investment because hiring you is an investment. So asking, this will make them think, I'm telling you, everyone will be like, mm, you know, the hiring managers, they will be like, mm. and they tell you what they want you to do, what they want to accomplish with your position. Something that will make them go back to the team and be like, this was the best investment ever. I do not regret hiring this person, you know? So asking this kind of question. Find a way to formulate it. I formulated it kind of in a long phrase, but find on a way that you ask this kind of question that make them think. And when they are done answering, you bring up the conversation again and be like, oh, actually, I'm so happy that this aligns uh, with maybe the present project I was working on. So I can bring my knowledge and skills to ensure that you can actually be able to accomplish this after 12 months that you can actually be able to proudly say that you made a good investment in me. This is your point to, for them to tell you inside what they think or, you know, and then you can use that advantage to sell yourself. And then number two, what is making this role such a priority right now? It makes, you, it makes them tell you the kind of challenges they are currently facing in their company. Uh, maybe they are having, uh, I don't know, just a lot of things on the table and they are short of team and they want someone to come and help out. And, you know, you want to understand why they are hiring. What's making them hire? What, what's, what's making this a priority right now? So these are just good questions to ask and that we inform you and that we show that you're a curious person and you are actually committed to, to the role. You know, so and then find other more questions you can ask. Many other questions, many other questions. There are so many, but ensure that they they show your enthusiasm to the you know to the board. You can see. Betty said, "Could you elaborate on the first question?" Okay, let me read it again. So let's pretend it's twelve months from now. That means we are in July. Let's pretend it's May of 2025, those are 12 months, yeah, I guess. Let's pretend it's May of 2025, so it's 12 months from now. 
and you have hired me already we have done training it's like you have trained me well i'm ready to work i've been working for a an year and then at that time of may 2025 you are looking back at now in july what do you need to have accomplished with my role for you to come back to your team and be like you know i'm glad we made this very huge and good investment in july i don't know if that's complicated to hear but you know it's like telling them what do you want me to should have accomplished after 12 months for me to come for you to come back and be like i did a great job uh, hiring this person because they did not disappoint they delivered like i expected them to do you get i don't know if that's clear betty you can open your mic and tell me okay it's clear yeah it's like a reflection from 12 months uh something they would have loved you to accomplish you know, and by this, they would tell you specifically within your role, like this, maybe they are building, I don't know, something. And by if within 12 months, they would love to see that finished, completed and ready to be deployed to wherever it has to be deployed, maybe to the clients or I don't know, anywhere. Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah, 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 basically. So Shamil explained it better in the chat box. Thanks for that. So other complementary questions that may come up in the interview, they may be like, uh, describe your experience with remote work. Um, you, know, you can start by saying that you have actually been doing your trainings remotely and you are familiar with the remote work tools, collaborating with the remote teams, you are familiar with anything that goes with stand-ups and other necessary meetings, I mean, anything that goes with remote work. And then number two, tell us something that you are curious to learn about, you know, especially within your role. And then tell us about something you're really good at. Then uh, a very tricky question, by the way, something you're good at. Yeah, so better to answer this confidentially, like you are really good at it. Then describe, tell us about a project that you have led. Uh, and then tell us how you would manage a colleague that is them doing their work that he or she is expected to deliver. Or what is your approach to keeping your manager updated on your work progress? Like, what's your approach to keeping your manager updated on your work? How do you do this? Do you update them daily, weekly, or when necessary? How do you approach this? And then what do you do outside work? Yep, then we have a challenge document. But before we go, uh, okay, actually we can go into the challenge document and then we go in a discussion with our fellow. The challenge document is straight to the point. It's, um, uh, yeah, let's go ahead. So with an introduction, in preparation for every single interview, and in addition to your materials being solid, Trainees should be prepared and answer the following five questions. The num number one is what do you know about our company? Tell me about yourself. Take me through a project that you are proud of. Then technical question, I will add it here. Musa, you help me out. And then your salary expectation. So what is the task? Task number one is to prepare a script of your answers for each question above and write it down on a Word document or Google document and then convert it in PDF and submit it on tanks by Saturday. And task number two is to record yourself a video by saying these same questions, by following the, the, the below instruction. Number one, you can use Zoom app. Why Zoom? is because Zoom allows you to pause when you want to move from one question to another. So it allows you to pause and it has good, you know, the, the bandwidth and everything is not, uh, it is good compared to other platforms. Or you can even use Loom. Loom is also another video recording platform. You, know, you can do much on Loom, but majority of the people do that. So, yeah. And you can, when you get into the presentation, uh, you know, by answering technically through a project that you're proud of, you are able to, uh, to present using Zoom and Loom, and they will stay on your record. 
And then after recording all your answers, ensure to save up the recording and please follow the recording instructions as they pop up after ending your recording because you do not want to lose your recording because uh, you clicked maybe cancel or you clicked, I don't know, anything. So ensure that you follow the recording instructions very, uh, very well as they pop up on your screen after you end your recording. Then upload that video in your drive, add the link of your video in your script document, and then submit. Remember to have access to your video. So notes, uh, question number one should be one minute maximum. Question number one is what do you know about our company? Then question number two about tell me about yourself it should be two to three minutes. Then question number three about a project, it should be five minutes. Then question number four about a technical question that we will write there, it should be taking um, four minutes maximum. And then question number five should be one minute or less because it's just about talking about your salary expectation. And uh, because there are there is no interviewer in this scenario, it's just you recording yourself. So you have to make uh, you have to be like you presenting. I don't know if I can call it like that. Because like uh, for example, in the salary negotiation, we were like uh, you have to ask about your budgets now. But this time there are no interviewers, so you can ask about the budgets. So go ahead and talk about the salary you're looking for. What we want to know is how you are going to be phrasing that sentence about your salary, you know. So this means your video should be 15 minutes maximum. And uh, if maybe it takes longer, let's be like uh, 20 minutes. Good. It's in the 20 minutes maximum, or in case you talk slow and you end up having a longer video, but ensure that in 20 minutes are maximum. And then note number two, when recording your video, say the title of the question first and then continue with your answer to make it have a format. And then do not like look like you are reading, just answer as you practice. Like do not read from your script. The script is just to guide you with the important information you do not have to forget, but ensure that you know you are not looking like you are reading somewhere, just as a really. Uh, and of course, uh, you can remember to practice before starting to record yourself. And then in case you need more gui guidance, I'm going to put here a section of the careers manual you can refer to, and then a tutorial and this recording. So this section, it has some videos from cohort A that they took on this exercise. So you can go check them out how they did and see what they did well that you can take notes of or what they did not do well that you can learn from. And uh, yeah, so I hope this will be helping. And, or, or you take a look at the story again. Yeah, that's it. So this looks like a hard interview to do because anything that comes with putting our camera there and recording ourselves is really hectic but it's it's good practice it's good practice you do it wrong you do it right for the or for the for the real interview you will not be having the nervousness because you practiced so this is for your better preparation for any upcoming interview so let's aim to do this let's aim to submit really let's not dodge this and uh yeah that's it if there are no questions on the on the challenge, then we can go back to our discussion. Can it be audio or so how do we share the video? Okay, let me find a video to share here so that you can see. Let me go on this drive. It's an academic drive, hope no one <laughs> trace me. So, okay, so here we have our drive. So let me show you how we share our drive. You come here in my drive. And then you click here, you click your right key or yeah, your right key, then click new folder. You can name it, name it tests, let me write test video, just it does so that it doesn't confuse anyone. So test video into if you click. And then you create your folder. And then I have my folder here, I click on it, then I click File Upload. 
I come here and then upload anything I want to upload. So let's say I want to upload this specific video. I have my video here. I was doing zip line. So let's see here. It will go ahead and load and load and load. It's very long. And then I have it here done. Yeah. And then we zoom with the recording and everything. Actually, let me not upload it. Also upload. But yeah, you saw the process. Then I, with any app you can use, either Loom or Zoom, when you are done recording, that video will come straight in your downloads or in your, yeah, it will come in your downloads. Or it will ask you which location you want to take it to. That's why we say it when you are done recording, follow the process of saving your video very carefully so that you do not end up losing it. But yeah. That's it. Audio is not allowed. You know, we are trying to practice how we be looking in front of the interviews, in front of the hiring managers, and you will not attend the interview with your camera off. Your camera is going to be on. So let's try just to do that exercise. It's easy. It's easy. 20 minutes and you're done. Oh, um, yeah. Let me delete this. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, any other question? Uh, is everything clear? Then we can go in our discussion. Any thumbs up? Any thumbs up? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then let's go into our discussion. Uh, we are going to be starting with Hilary. Hilary, hi, are you here? You ready? Yes, I'm ready, hi. Okay, so basically you take us through uh, what did they ask you during the interview, not only technical questions, but everything from the very first question. You told me it was a maximum of 10 questions, so, I try to take us through them without mentioning the answers. And then when you get to the technical ones, that's when you can elaborate on what actually did they ask you and how did you answer that question? Okay. Um, so uh, with, the, with the first question, uh, so I got into the meeting and, <clears throat> and um, yeah, he introduced himself and uh like the pronunciation so on and then uh, he asked me if i can uh you know if, if i can hear him and you know just to make sure he can communicate and then he went ahead and asked me uh told me that he wanted something uh you know he wanted to have a like a conversation some some like he said it it was like a talk and he asked me if I have any question to ask uh, before he asked me uh, and proceeds to ask the question. So uh, that's when I asked him a question. And, uh, you know, just to ensure I can give him the correct, the, the like, the, the answers that, that fit what he wants. And he started with like, he started asking me if I'm familiar with drug because he had introduced that the role will be an engineer. So he asked me, um, what I was asked was uh, um, my experience with drug and LLMs. So that was the first thing I was asked. And then on the second question, um, <clears throat> so so when I gave my response, that's when he gave, he, he gave me like uh, a follow-up question on on what I mentioned, uh, talking about vector store, and uh, he asked about vector store, how how vector, uh, how you how how like you get your documents to be stored in a vector store. Uh, that was about embedding. So he gave me a scenario. You have a uh, like a uh, um, there was a. Uh, sentence like not sentence like a phrase quick brown folks you know that 
a popular sentence, a famous sentence. Uh, and you asked me about how would I go about getting that into vectors and storing it to the vector database. So, uh, and he told me like to explain to him in simple terms. So that was the question he asked uh, on the follow up. And um, so again, following that, he asked about how he like split the sentences into like different, the same words and yeah, yeah that question, but uh, so the, like the next thing, the next question I was asked was if you get that question and you kind of break it down into each word quick brown separate you know and you store it and you convert it to vectors how many vectors will you have you know that that was like to show my understanding or something and uh yeah gave him a response on that and and then he the, the the next question that was asked so mostly these first questions were about drag and llms and then the next question was about um he, the uh, let me remember it was about you know like improving rag so how would you go about improving rag so you know he has i mentioned my the, my different strategies and then the following on that there was like advanced rag so you know there's optimizations that you can add to rag that are like advanced so he asked me to give him us one example of that advanced rag whether i had it or not whether i had implemented it in the past or not just to explain to him how it would improve the rag so i gave my scenario uh, i give my example so since uh i i think you mentioned that he wasn't from he hadn't come across it so he you know he looked it up right away and asked me to explain the same so like i gave him a simple explanation of the same and he was kind of looking at some some, some like i think some screen to confirm so and then <clears throat> so from there on i think the the next question was like was about uh my experience with coding so you know like my my entire experience with coding so for me for for that experience with coding generally uh not just i think intern academy i think that is what is meant and then the next question was about if i if i've uh you know if i've done anything outside rag and llms uh and then the next question was about my experience with teamwork and what I learned from teamwork, like what I what was the best thing about teamwork and what was you know the challenges or downsides with teamwork. So I gave my scenarios, both of them. And then uh so th from there on the the questions were was about um the startup. So uh, he asked me, so how could I like um, give an advice on someone to be successful in a startup? So on a startup, um, on the on the startup, uh, like I gave my examples. Um, I'm not sure if I'm uh, Pascalin. Uh, I, I, I. Can see a lighting. I like. Uh, am I on the right track, or should I improve my? You are. You are. But, but we can make it conversational. So, uh, if okay. you feel free to ask an to ask an question. Okay, okay. But um, I'm about to finish on the two. I think like three questions that I was asked. So, the other question was that uh, you know, how how will you give advice on someone? Uh, to for a startup to be successful and then uh, from their own was how like do you make a product as successful so i think this was kind of different when you know making making success in developing something and uh, bringing it to production and then 
uh, I think on the last one was, uh, this is the last one. So I was asked on, not, not really the last one, second last, I was asked about salary expectations. So I gave my response, but he asked now the specific, like, well, what specifically uh, is my expectation? Uh, uh, I think the figures. And then the last question was, I, um, if I have any question to ask him before he leaves. So there are when I ask my questions and those were kind of like how, how it went mostly. Yeah, perfect, perfect. We can continue if no one has a question. Maybe you can be putting the questions together or any curiosity, really. Yeah. Um, still, you can take off. Hello. Um, so, uh, my interview was uh, in person. Uh, it was like a little bit different from Hilary's experience. So, uh, there were around 10 people uh, and then they asked us to join on a Google Meet and to share our screen there. So they will record that we are not cheating on the exam. So the exam they gave us were three lead code challenges. The level were, I guess two of them were hard and one was medium. So uh, they give us one hour and 30 minutes to solve the problems. Uh, I don't think the time was sufficient because uh, all the interview, uh, all the people that were interviewing were saying that. But um, for me uh, specifically, what was challenging was memorizing the syntax because we were not allowed to search uh, on the internet. So um, what I tried to do was on the parts that I forgot to memorize the syntax, I tried to write a pseudocode algorithm or I try to explain how I would solve the problem uh, in, 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 in a natural language. So um, two of the questions were on Pandas framework. So I couldn't memorize few of, uh, some of the Pandas uh, syntax. Other than that, one, uh, one was like a Python question. I was able to do that. Um, after that, after finishing those um, questions, they give us a chance, to, uh, like it's like an interview, but um, just only to explain our how, what kind of approach we took to solve the problems. So I take that time to explain to them how I solved the questions or uh, for the parts that I wrote pseudo code, I try to explain them what kind of approach that I was taking uh, and that's it after that i didn't make it to the another uh, to the second phase but abraham taka was able to do so so maybe he can continue from here uh, and yes i i remember the questions i can share the link to the questions on slack yeah absolutely thank you so much Thank you. Abraham, can you hear us? Thank you, not sure. Uh, so I tried to reach him as well on Slack, but we didn't get hold of him. But Abraham, if you can hear us also, if you have any other questions that you did in the next phase of the interview, so how the interview going so far, please feel free to update us in all SGS month one. Um, any other question to Mr. Uh, I've been asking Abraham about the questions. So uh, just to give you insight about them, uh, the role was machine learning. Uh, so uh, they asked him uh, questions related to machine learning. I think uh, he has shared some of the questions on the Slack. Uh, also, uh, since there were like, he has some experience in cloud engineering. They were also asking him about those because they saw that on his CV. So I think whatever we wrote in our CV, we should be able to explain explain them. Uh, they will end up, they will 
caught the attention of the interviewers. I think that's it. Okay, amazing. Thanks for sharing, Ms. Thiel. Uh, let's hear from you, Abubakar. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. So, this mo most of the uh, questions I think have been touched by uh, Hillary. So yeah. So the the first thing I will I will talk about something uh, that is not mentioned. So all my questions for that matter. So uh, one of the things I did was like do some research on the company. So. I googled Rizbuzz on the company, so I get LinkedIn uh, handles and everything. So throughout my research, I had like I didn't have much information, uh, so I suspected it would be a startup like it was like it was founded earlier. So yeah, uh, there is there was no much information, so I had to find another way. So there was uh, a previous year alumni that works there. So he was called Fasaha. So I asked for, for his contact, like Rodas and Arun gave me his contacts and we set up like 30 minutes call about how, wh wh what is, what is, what are the rules? Because it wasn't spe specified in, the, in this thing. So I asked how it could, how the interview process would go. Uh, was like working in uh, Rizbaz, uh, what are the roles and responsibilities that you want to fill the gap on? So I, I prepared some five or six questions so as not to take more time. So yeah, uh, the challenge he faced, the, the company culture. So we talked like for 30 to 45 minutes, which was insightful. So I get some insights, uh, prepared my uh, output. So yeah, uh, th that's basically what I did and went into the interview. So the interview process was, for me, it was really good because it, it didn't look like much of uh, like question and answer, question and answer. So it looks it looks as if it was uh, communication and like the interview was scheduled for like for like 30 minutes and we took like 45 another minute, like an hour and 10, 10 minutes. So we talked about different things. Yeah, I will, I will get to that in a moment. But most of the questions are touched up by Hillary. Uh, like uh, the vector impeding uh, questions, like if you if it was a quick prompt folks, how many would have like that was easy because we had experience, so we learned about it in at an academy, uh, like uh, familiarity with poetry, like poetry. I I was familiar with poetry even before the academy. I saw it. I know what it does. Uh, even at the academy, uh, there was some. Uh, I think I think it was docker compose file that uses poetry so I had to fix that so I know I know how it is so I answered those questions that I was familiar and he asked me what is used for so like basically poetry was for larger dependency uh, management because pip might might fail for large scale projects so I answered that so yeah experience with rags I had a small experience before ten academy like trying to implement i was learning a small bit because yeah i wanted i know what i would join uh, prior to joining ten academy so yeah so my educational background so yeah i talked about my educational background how i learned java by myself like c plus plus like like it amplified my uh, willingness to learn even with no resources so yeah i talked about those because uh, again that's because i was prepared i wrote some um, i think miriam gave me those insights so i i wrote at least four or five things on education background and everything so it gave me like how uh, like it gave me the confidence uh, so I, I i i wasn't fearful that much so anxiety is there but uh, it was fine <clears throat> so one of the other things was salary expectations uh, I, I i didn't want to answer th that question but i asked i asked him <laughs> if i could have more time to think about it but he pressed me to actually uh, answer those so like 
I think it's a coincidence, but I said uh, what uh, Pascaline mentioned here. Uh, so I said around 1,300, and I said also I don't I don't have any maximum. <laughs> so like it's to lighten up the moment, I guess. So yeah, uh, my experience in working team. Yeah, what what is what is the? <coughs> oh yes, <laughs> so like. Uh, teamwork yeah like i had i had a really good experience in team also i have i had been working on startups uh, like it's it's it, I, I knew what uh, what to answer like because like for, for example he asked me what is the most important thing in startup so i told him that the most important thing in a startup is the team so nothing more so if the team doesn't perform well there is no i don't i don't think there will be a startup so yeah, he also added added on to that. He used to think that it was like hard work, perseverance, and everything. So uh, all those would not be as good as having a solid team that communicates well. And so yeah, my coding experience. Yeah, I think I touched up on that. So what took forty five minutes longer was the questions I asked. So <clears throat> I saw that it is a startup. So I curated my questions based on that. So, like, uh, is it a product they are building? I don't know about that because, as a startup, it might be a product or they might be taking clients. Uh, like, I think Fasa mentioned to me that, but I wanted more clarification on that. So, I asked him that uh, he is working on uh, rugs and why he is working on rugs. Probably having those discussion now we won't won't be that much effective so yeah current and future directions for for Rizbuzz, like what he envisions since a start since it is a startup vision really matters where like it's like a north star probably yeah we talk uh, we talked about drug in this future yeah uh, yeah that's that's basically it okay amazing um yes you know yeah, so I remember the question I was asked, uh, Abu Bakr mentioned about poetry. Uh, it was uh, important we spent some time there. I was asked if I know about linting tools, um, you know, what poetry does and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, because that was uh, like, I think it was most, it was crucial. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I even I remember that was, yeah, linting tools. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I told him about what uh, I used previously for React or something. So he also asked, I remember now, uh, what, uh, what tools do you use for development, like VS Code and what extension do you use in VS Code? So basically that shows that you are familiar with uh, the development environment. Uh, like yeah basically that's that's it. okay amazing thank you so much everyone um so happy to hear about your experience and you know i'm looking forward you know, we all are looking forward to be having more stories from everyone very soon so really let's go keep practicing keep up scaling ask questions and then we start applications very recent very soon as sleep is getting ready but also if you have time in your own time and you have free time feel free just to look up linkedin to look up indeed glassdoor uh, different companies that are hiring now and see if there are any applications you can drop for now as we are waiting for leap uh yeah like uh, use any opportunity you may have now. And uh, and uh, yeah, and we're still looking forward to the submissions of the interview. I uh, would hope that we get the submissions from everyone here. It's better preparation, trust me. If you feel like it's not going to be worth it, try to practice one answer on tell me about yourself, see how you do. Yeah, I'm, being, I'm pretty sure it's going to be challenging. So let's um, let, let's take this assignment as a personal assignment and go and work on it and submit on Saturday. Yeah, that's it for now.
Okay, thanks everyone for joining. Have a great afternoon.